योग कर्मसु कौशल dear friends it gives me immense pleasure to be with you at this moment in this session today we will discuss about human and bees before we initiate about human and bees i on behalf of faculty of education vemed college of education extend my warm wishes and namaste to all of you friends we all are associated with higher education and when we talk of higher education there are several questions that comes to our mind one of the question that comes is what do we exactly mean by higher education when we say higher education does it mean that it is only acquiring the bachelor's masters or the mphil or the doctoral degree or the postdoc degree is it so or it has some other meaning too what what it is first of all we need to focus upon this of course when we say higher education it is with acquisition of the degrees but it is not only about acquiring the degrees it is all about acquiring the expertise of the subject of the topic not restricting to the subject it is all about exploring our hidden potentials our abilities our capabilities in fact it is something about exploring our self you know the difference talent this word and latent they are just the same alphabets but see latent and talent it is all about turning the latent into talent that is higher education that is higher education i strongly believe that higher education deals with getting the expertise developing the expertise as well exploring our self turning the latent into the talent i remember here swami vivekanand and gandhi ji Swami Vivekananda says, "Education is the manifestation of the divine perfection already existing in man or individual." Gandhi ji says, "Education is all about bringing the best of the individual's body, mind, and soul." in both the education something is very very common and the common is that the best resides in the individual education it deals with helping the individual know that the best resides in him or her and helping it come out that is higher education that is education in fact and when we say higher education higher education is all about a part of this it is all about exploring the self 
knowing our talent knowing our potential and using it or applying it for the betterment of the self and the society and of course even if we do it for self it is likely to add to the society if you are doing it for the society it is likely to add to us society and we are complementary to each other and so there is no nothing to differentiate between the two if we are doing for one obviously the other is favored if you are going for the other no problem first one will be favored higher education is the time of exploring the self and adoring the society with better than what we have received and earned from it the society till now has given us a lot the higher education motivates us that now it's time for us we have to give back to the society what we have earned from it but fortunately or unfortunately the situation is something else whether educated or uneducated employed or unemployed employer or employee rich or poor i guess each of us are undergoing anxiety stress fatigue some of them are even depressed and why why probably for nothing probably for no reason you know most of us are fond of unhappiness or sorrow i'm saying we are fond of unhappiness or sorrow we have happiness in and around us we have joy just besides but we find the ways to trouble ourselves we find the ways to trouble ourselves we turn unhappy merely with the comparison take the example till now suppose suppose that i don't have any job i am a doctorate and a double post graduate double graduate but yet i don't have any job since two years i am wandering i don't have any job my mindset is such that i am ready to do any job anything let us start i am a married person now so i have to do something i feel that i'll start with anything whatever it is even 15000 20000 is fine i'll start even 10000 is fine i applied somewhere and i got a job i got a job of 40000 now what do you feel it should be a matter of joy i was ready for 10000 i was troubled a lot and now i am getting a job of i am having a job of 40000 i should be happy but do you feel i'll be real i have the reason to make myself unhappy i found that the person just next to me who was only a double graduate and double post graduate he he is also appointed and he is getting 45000 i tell you this reason is enough for me to make me unhappy this reason is enough for me 
to make me unhappy. See, this is something called uh, the hedonic equilibrium. I got the 40,000 job. I was more than happy. I was mad with joy, maybe. And I wanted to balance myself. What did I do? I tried to find something else and I found him. That is getting 45,000 and he's just masters. He doesn't even have the doctorate. My joy is over. My sorrows are here. Now I live with the sorrow. Although I'm getting 40,000, I have a job. I'm at a better place, but then too, you know, I'm not happy. Now, could you see what the reason exactly is? What, the, what exactly is the reason of this sorrow? The reason is comparison and the poor comparison. The unhealthy comparison. And it is because of this we turned our joy into sorrow. We turned our joy into sorrow. What happened? How happiness turned sorrow? Starting with the hedonic equilibrium, it reached the idea of equality inequality and here we are carried away with the ego but we hardly understood it we are carried away i tell you we don't even understand it and from here starts the problems for us although we have many things of joy in and around us. But then too, we are unable to make ourselves happy. Take the example, another example, a middle-aged parents, both of them, the father and the mother, are very happy, happy with the idea that now their young child is about to marry. They are searching for a beautiful girl. They want their child to be married. They are searching. One fine day suddenly they find that the child, he comes with a girl and he says, father, mother, she is your daughter-in-law. I have planned to marry her. Then starts the story, the new story. Now, see, the idea for the parents also was the marriage of the son. The son also wants to marry. Son says that, yeah, I'm marrying, but I'm marrying this girl. The idea is satisfied. But then too, there are problems. And the problem rises so high, so high that the father, he says, my son, my dear, fine, it's your call. You can take, no problem. But my house is no more. Now your house. You have to find your own house. Build your house where you can live in your way. Your life, your way. But in your house, not in my house. Now see, here also, it was all about marriage. The son has done marriage, but then what was wrong? Then what was wrong? Here there are several things that comes. Nothing was wrong, but what happens? There are several ideas that come. And the ideas of love, affection, obedience, respect, societal status, my reputation, family name, and what not comes. The parents say feel that my love and my affection has not been understood by my son. They feel that their societal status and reputation 
has been staked by the son. Their family name. The, the son has brought a bad name to their family. Hmm. Many things, many things come. The simple question is, it is all about marriage. He has married a girl only. Nothing wrong. But then, here we go very specific. Which girl? What type of girl? What is her family status? What is her family background? And many questions. And with this, starts a problem. I simply want to say that it starts with a blame game. Here, it starts with a blame game. And each one starts blaming. The father says, it's because of him. And so what not he says? We lost a spat. We lost this. We lost that. Is it really that? Is it really that? What did you lose? And what respect? Which respect? Probably it's not the fact. But it's the idea that leads us to the stage. And from the sudden idea of the job, of the joy, now we turn totally unhappy. Whatever example you take, you find today that the people are restless. The people are unhappy. Somewhere, something, lot is missing. We have everything probably. We see the science and technology has developed so much, so much. So much it has developed. But then too, something is missing. And that something is truly everything. That missing part is the peace. Today, we have all and everything, but the fact remains that all of us are seriously in some game. We are unable to understand what it is. Something is missing. That is peace. Then comes the point, what is peace? What is peace? You can see this picture. I have some more pictures for you. See the first picture. There are two pictures. On the left side, it is an inner peace. And we have the Beautiful scene. On the right side, we have the natural scenery. You see also the symbol of peace. The symbol of peace. Then what actually peace is? This is also a wonderful one. Marvelous. Peace. Peace. You see, here you find peace standing on the mountain ranges on the top and having a look. That is something very, very special. Something very special. We and nature, only nature and I, feeling the nature, it is so soothing, I tell you. We enjoy the most. And here we are at peace. Here we are at peace. You can see it is not only about human. It is also about animals. See this fero ferocious animal. They as if they are giving the pose each of them. Not really, crazily, okay, and each of them ready to give, hey, I'm the first one, hey, you go to the side, something like that. 
they are also at ease and at peace with their dearer and the nearer ones. This is the picture. I'm very sure I need not to tell that who is he. Of course, the most popular Buddha. And whenever it is about Buddha, it is about peace. Peace comes from within. Peace comes from within. Do not see it out. In short, all I want to say is that the problems start with our restlessness, with our understanding. What we call understanding in major cases, it remains as a misunderstanding. And it is with this misunderstanding, we conceptualize it wrongly, we take it wrongly, we perceive it wrongly. And from here, the problem start. We turn restless. And as we turn restless, we lose the peace. Today, although we have all and everything, but then too, the fact remains that we hardly have peace. We hardly have peace. What is the problem that <coughs> we, when it lies within, then too, why do we say that we don't have peace? It's only because we have perceived it in a wrong way. Peace is a path. It is a path which we need to follow every day, every minute. And that path starts wherever you are. It is all about acceptance. <clears throat> it is all about giving. And when we miss these things, when we miss this attitude, this attitude, then we lose peace. Then here, we need to understand what peace is. In simple words, if I say, peace is acquiring the state of harmony with self and environment. As such, I give you the example that whether it is a case of the parents, no one can be more dearer and uh, nearer to us than the parents. Okay. But then, even when such a stage comes, even the parents, they are against us. They are against us. So when we can lose or we can miss the harmony with our parents, what to talk of others? In short, peace is acquiring the state of harmony with self and environment. First of all, we have to be at peace with self. We have, and to be at peace with self means we have to have harmony with self continuously. We are having the conflicts, the conflicts of the materialistic, uh, for the possession of the materialistic object, human, and whatnot, for the position, power, money. So we are undergoing several conflicts. When we come out of those conflicts, when we find the solution for those conflicts, we see that we have acquired the state of harmony. And when we have acquired this state of harmony with self, then there are chances that now we can be at peace. Because still there is something missing. We are not alone in and around us. <clears throat> we have many people. We have the environment. So when we are at peace with self, we also need to check that we are at peace with the environment. And when we have the harmony with self, and when we have the harmony with environment, only then we can be at peace. So peace is acquiring the state of harmony with self and environment. <clears throat> now comes what could be the characteristics of peace. When we say characteristics of peace, again we have to think of that when we say that peace is all about establishing the harmony with self, then 
simple thing comes that if it is acquiring harmony with self, what it should be? You can see this picture. We saw this picture earlier also. But here you can see the person standing on the top of the mountains amidst the nature. In the next picture, you can see the bird swimming in the pond. A beautiful natural environment. These are the time when we are at ease and at peace. We are at harmony with ourself. When we say harmony with ourself, the first thing that comes out is that there is something which is internal. There is something which is internal. Here also you see the picture. Here also the person in the amidst the nature. See this picture. Totally natural. Looking at this picture also, we feel something better. With this picture also, easily we can see and feel the beauty of the nature. <clears throat> With this, we can see and establish the characteristics of peace. Peace is internal. It starts from within. I said peace is a path. It is a path. We have to follow it. But it starts from within and thus one of the characteristics of peace is it is internal. When we say we are at peace, how can we feel that we are at peace? We can feel it only through the expression. And when we find the expressions of kindness, sympathy, empathy, love, affection, care, courage, we can say that the person is at peace. You cannot get love, affection and care unless and until the person is at peace with himself. A father, when he see, sees his child, he forgets everything. A mother, same way, when he sees her child, she forgets every problem and out of love, emotions, she starts doing everything for her child. Looking at her child, he and or she, they are at peace. Kindness, sympathy and empathy are also the characteristics of peace. Whenever we show kindness, if we are restless, we cannot be kind. If we are restless, if we are fatigued, if we are um, stressed, we cannot show sympathy and empathy. So it's simple. Peace can be expressed as kindness, sympathy, empathy, love, affection, care, courage, motivation, etc. One of the major characteristics of peace is it doesn't change with experience. When you are at peace, it is not uh, that uh, with uh, the materialistic objects you will change. Your experience throughout will remain the same. Your experience doesn't change. And since your experience doesn't change, so you also don't change. And thus, it is saying that peace doesn't change with experience. The person who is at peace is indifferent to materialistic pleasures, joy, sorrow. If he sees uh, someone is suffering or someone is no more, he won't burst out in tears. If he sees that someone is a billionaire and he is coming and uh, wishing him and touching, he won't turn joyous. Why? He knows that it is not the money which is important. It is the person, it is the feeling and all 
human are alike. He doesn't care or consider a person because of his economic status. And so he is not joyous looking at the billionaire coming to him. When we treat a person based upon his economic status, we feel joy or sorrow. But if we feel the human as human, only as human, irrespective of his economic status, there's nothing to feel joy or sorrow. We will be alive. All are alive. I, you, each and every one, whether he's a small child or an old man, a boy or a girl, a rich or a poor, he will remain the same. That is the characteristic of peace. The person who is at peace is devoid of ambitions. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have ambition. Here, normally, what type of ambitions should we have? Today, we all are ambitious. But what type of ambitions we have? Are those ambitions really the need of us? What is our ambition? To have a, those who are unmarried, they are planning to have a good husband or a wife. And the definition of good differs for each one. Those who are already married, they are looking for a good child. Again here, the good it is defined in different way. Those who are jobless, they are dreaming for job. Those who are not happy with their job, they are planning for a change. And these are their ambitions. But do you feel, are these ambitions the uh, ambitions which is really required? What do we need? The person who is at peace, he doesn't have such ambitions. His ambitions are different. He is not restricted to the materialistic pleasures. He is extended to the idea of exploring the nature, exploring the self. His ambitions are to explore the self. He wishes for self-realization. This is the characteristic of a person who is at peace. So, the person who is at peace is devoid of the materialistic ambitions. Those who are at peace, their behavior is consistent. They are trustworthy, you can predict them. They are at harmony with self. And when a person is at harmony with self, he is ought to be at harmony with others. He has love, care for human, animals, birds, nature. One of the most important characteristics of peace is it is permanent. The one who is at peace is at peace always. He is not shattered with anything in and around, with the happenings in and around. He is not shattered. Now comes, what is the need of peace? When we say need of peace, again here we have to think, that why should we think of need of peace? Why are we talking about peace, human and peace? Today, the world is suffering. Although we have everything, but then too, hardly any one of us are really, really happy. The meaning of happiness is restricted to time being entertainment. We see the movies and time being we feel happy. Uh, we entertain ourselves and we call it happiness. But is it really that? Again, after a few minutes, when we come out of that situation, we are no more at peace. So, we need to think of that why peace is required. During this pandemic also, we have seen a lot, a lot. We have seen 
the people suffering, dying. We have seen the people having everything, but then too many people didn't bother to help. Simultaneously, we also saw that there were people who extended all and every support. If we want our society to be good, to be better, we need to think of that how we can. We have to think of the hatred, the jealousy, the differences. We have to think of safety, security. We have to think of the integration. We have to think of consistency and appropriateness of living. And as we think of this thing, we come to the need of peace because in our society, many people, many people are suffering. You can see this picture. Here also you can see how amicably they are living. See this picture, a beautiful picture depicting the worthiness of nature. Nature is at peace now. The most beautiful glimpse. We need peace. Why? We find hatred and we jealousy differences, whether it is a job, it is amidst the our own family, the neighborhood, uh, friends. We, several times, we come across this hatred and we jealousy differences. Peace is required to avert this. We need to overcome this hatred and we jealousy differences. Whatever be the differences, whether be it the differences of gender, caste, creed, religion, nationality, what not? Peace is required to have a better life. Earlier also I said that we have everything, but can we say that we have a, we are leading the life? Can we say that? We cannot. Because you see, we give our whole day the best part of our day that is from morning till evening that we are giving to the offices to the work we hardly have the time to care for our fellow colleagues or the family members doing all the work we are so fatigued so tired we reach home we are no more enthusiastic. We do love, but we show, but it is not all. Something is missing. Thus, peace is required to have a better life, to enhance our safety, security. The world ac across, they are missing this safety, security, stability. If we want peace, we need to enhance safety, security, stability, and uniformity. Peace is also required to load ourselves with the effective thoughts about the ideas, objects, behavior, etc. Today we have the problem of what is right, what is good, what is desirable? Peace is required to come out with the idea of ascertaining what is right, good, or desirable. We have many people in and around, but the integration of human is questionable. Whether we have it, it is a major question. 
peace is required for the integration of human for the consistent and appropriate living if such are the need needs of peace obviously we can depict the importance of peace what is the importance of peace simply if you want to have a better life a better living we have to perceive the world better peace is required to perceive the world better just now also i have stressed that there is something missing 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 we are not perceiving the world better we are not perceiving it better to perceive it better peace is required when we have peace we can perceive the world better since we are not at ease and at peace we are not perceiving the world better as i said that if you are at peace you can load yourself with effective thoughts peace helps you in the integration of human peace helps you in the consistent and appropriate living peace builds up society integrates social relations see if the human is integrated social relations will be integrated if we have the consistent and appropriate living the societies will develop so peace is required to build up societies and integrate social relations to mold the ideal dimensions of personality and depth of culture our culture any culture no culture is wrong every culture is the best in itself but somehow the way we have interpreted it sometimes it creates chaos it is not the culture but that interpretation the poor interpretation creates the problem when you are at peace things are different thus peace helps you to mold the ideal dimensions of personality what a personality is how a personality should be judged and also it helps you to mold the dimensions of culture peace helps to influence the people's behavior it adds to the conduct of social life and to the norms which guides you in the day to day behavior if we have peace the important and the most important thing is that peace helps you to be human peace helps you to serve humanity peace helps you to serve humanity these and many more could be the need and the importance of peace everywhere this is associated with human and thus every human requires peace if we have peace only then the world can be a better place then now we need to think of that what could be the sources of peace the sources of peace as usual the first most important can be nature family family members they can be the sources of peace education that can be the source of peace experience the great leaders gandhi lincoln rabindranath tagore swami vivekananda they are the source of peace they are the light of hope media that can be the source of peace community and society
the organizations religion culture history books and many more things can be the sources of peace i have cited a few but then this is not all anywhere where you are at peace with anything with what you are at peace with yourself is a source of peace even the small child who helps you to be at peace is a source of peace what are the principles of peace the key principle of peace refer to some preferences here you should have the preference for intrinsic values love humanity sensitivity equality human and humanity these are some key principles and it is all about preferences what should we prefer we have to prefer the inner values as such you can and say is that education is a manifestation of divine perfection already existing in an individual so the goodness lies in us all the values are within we have to find that we have to explore let it come out let it flow let there be flood but the flood of emotions these values the values which are able to help the society be a better place love humanity sensitivity equality consideration for human and humanity these are the values which we need to follow love and acceptance for one and all is the principle of peace pleasure cannot be acquired with materialistic object any materialistic object it can help you entertain yourself for a few minutes seconds hours or a days or a month but then it cannot give you the all time pleasure that is temporary we have to understand this it says that pleasure cannot be acquired with materialistic objects we have to keep ourselves detached with materialistic pleasure i don't say that you live at a void they are they may be the need they may be the need and they may help us to have a you know some luxury but then they are not all don't get attached to it because attachment with attachment starts all the problem with attachment starts all the problem another principle of peace is life is not permanent this idea is very important how you perceive life it is well said that a lily of a day is fairer far in may if you compare an oak tree and a lily although an oak tree is tall enough it lives a long life and the lily it lives only for a day but then too a lily spreads its fragrance in its short life the lily turns more important whatever it is we have to understand life is not permanent and so whatever short time we have we have to cherish it with our dearer and nearer ones we have to appreciate human and humanity we have to appreciate love we have to feel the sensitivity and the equality and as we do this we are at peace another principle of peace is action in inaction and inaction in action this 
is something from Bhagavad Gita. It is an important principle for peace. We all know that life is not permanent. And that body is the rest house of the soul. We have to understand this, that this body which we have, this time being, it is a temporary rest house of the soul. Those who believe in God, for them there is the existence of soul. So the soul is important, not the body. We have to give the preference for human and humanity. If we do this, if we follow this, simply life will be better. We are and we will be at ease and at peace. If these are the principles of peace, what could be the scope of peace? What could be the scope of peace? When we say scope of peace, then where peace can be extended to? It starts for human, animals, and extends to nature. Everything in and around us. This is the shortest way you can express or describe the scope of peace. It starts with an individual, extends to society, institution, organization, societal rules and regulations, culture, religion, history, environment, philosophy, psychology, ethics, science, commerce, arts, management, aesthetics, spiritualism, and whatnot. Peace can be extended to all and everywhere, whatever, everything or every idea to which human can be associated, to which human can be associated. Thus, peace is very, 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 very important. Now we need to know that why there is lack of peace. What are the reasons for the lack of peace? Of course, it starts with our habits. I can see this picture. Both the pictures depict something special. When this picture, these are the results. We need to find out the cause. What are the cause? No peace exists here. Why it is so? See here also, only two people, but then two. One says right, one says wrong. In the another picture also, my way, your way. Only two people, but then two. There are differences. There are differences, and the differences, see how strong they are. Say this again. It's not only about male. There also you can see. Only two, whether it is boy or girl, or two girls, or two boys, the problems exist. These are also the pictures, complete in itself, and depict a lot, speaks a lot. We need to understand that why, why such situations are existing, why this exists. What is the problem? The cause for the lack of peace are 
some of these, but not restricted only to these. There can be many more. It starts with the habits. Each of us have the habits. These habits may be described as good and bad, depending upon time, place, position, people, in and around. Whatever, there are some habits which has been described as bad by the society. Whenever any of us fall a prey, fall a prey to such bad habits, there is lack of peace. If I have some of the bad habits, my family cannot be at peace. And so cannot be the society at peace. Because if I am having that bad habit, I am likely to do some harm to any of them. So with even one case, peace is deteriorated. So these bad habits, whether it is drugs or alcoholism or anything, anything, any bad habit that may turn a cause for the lack of peace. And there is environment. We all, in our family, I still remember when I was very young, for my child, I give the example, for my child, I fell for an environment and I gave him that environment. Every parent, every parent, they give their child a safe environment. But that environment is restricted only when they are with the parents. And then when they go out, they come in a new environment. Thereby, they lack that care, safety and security, which they got from their parents. Here, they are restless. The child is restless. The same thing happens with us when we grow up. This environment, whatever we want, we all are habituated to a particular environment. If we get that environment, we feel good. But if we don't get that environment, we lose peace. So this environment is also a cause for the lack of peace. Many times inefficiency. I may not be efficient at all in everything. And my boss is expecting that efficiency from me. Since I'm not able to do, I may lose the peace. Fear. Anywhere and everywhere, wherever fear exists, there cannot be peace. Wherever fear exists. And this fear can be the fear of anything, anything. If you have fear, you can't be at peace. Immaturity. When we have immaturity, that also causes lots of problems. And with this immaturity, this immaturity also turns to be a cause of lack of peace. Being immature, we don't know how to behave, when to behave, what to behave, how to behave, what to speak, when to speak, how to speak, where to sit, how to say it. The basic etiquettes, if we lack that thing, that also turns to be a cause of lack of peace. So, and that comes out, out of immaturity. Consequences, groupism, these are also the causes for lack of peace. Vandalism, pride, pride of position, 
power, money. These are the causes of lack of peace. You have more money. You turn restless. How to save and protect my money? You have no money. You are restless. How to get money? You have power. You need more power, more power. You don't have power. You strive for power. I want power. You know, neither you have or you don't have. The problems exist because lack of satisfaction, greed. The more the greed, more the problem. So this greed, that also is a cause of lack of peace. Need orientation. We all do the things based upon our needs. Our priorities are set based upon our need. As is the need, so is the priority. This need orientation is also a cause for the lack of peace. If you just turn materialistic, the neighbor, he has a big TV. I also need to have a big TV. The neighbor, he has a big car. I need to have a big car. If you orient yourself, if you orient your need in this way, it is likely to be a cause for lack of peace. Wrong notions, wrong ideas, wrong understanding, misinterpretation, ill treatment. These are the causes of lack of peace. Many times we play a joke, but we don't know that whether this joke is really worthy enough and is it really being taken in a healthy way? If you give the healthy jokes, it may be taken in a healthy way. But unhealthy jokes, if you expect that it is taken in a healthy way, it's something wrong. Again, the place, position, person, in front of whom you place that joke, that also is important. We don't know that which individual treats the other individual in what way. We don't know that. So, since we don't know and we are playing the joke, we are likely to fall a prey. We have hurted that person. Selfishness, self-obsession. Today, many people the autocratic people, they serve, they suffer of this self-obsession. Everything, they want to start it with them and end it with them. And in between, only them. That also is cause of lack of peace. You may have everything, but then to you lack peace because you are self-obsessed. Poor background, ego, fake pride, Inability to difference, differentiate between good and bad. These are also the causes for the lack of peace. These and many more can be the causes of lack of peace. You may list out n numbers of items. More. You can. All I want to show is that the small things, but these are the causes of lack of peace. We need to understand if we know the causes of peace, only then we can understand that how we can find the solution to curb these causes. You can see this picture. Again, nature. Nature is the best source of peace. Need no one if you are with nature. Every individual is the best, best friend of himself. And if he is with himself and nature, he is at peace. 
You can see this. How to develop peace? How peace can be acquired? We have seen the causes of lack of peace. So now we need to know and understand that how peace. We say that peace is all about developing or having harmony with self and environment. So how to develop that harmony? Here it is. Developing harmony deals with developing ourselves. It deals with developing ourselves. How to develop? Develop against the evils of the differences of, you know, we have several differences in and around us. And these differences are the evils. We have to come out of these differences. We have to develop ourselves against these evils. The evils of the differences. The differences of what? The differences of gender. Race, caste, category, group, religion, language, province, state, country, nationality, power, position, money, ownership, physical strength, color, etc. Whatever differences we have, wherever we find the differences, wherever we, am, we can create the differences, come out of those differences unless and until you curb these differences, unless and until you come out of these evils of differences. We cannot be at peace. We cannot because we cannot develop harmony. So. The priority is we need to develop ourselves. We need to develop ourselves. Against these evils. When we say gender, it is all about being a boy or a girl. We all are humans. We are human. The feeling which we undergo the same thing. The others also undergo. Then why to create differences? Whether it is caste, category, group, or religion, every religion, no religion treats anyone or uh, uh, teaches anyone to treat badly. No religion says like that. No religion promotes killing. Every religion is respectable. Language. Every language has its own beauty. And language is a mode. It is a mode of communication. We have to understand that thing and we should have the acceptance for that. For every language. If you are differentiating based on this. We cannot be at peace. Whether it is province, state, country, even nationality. Some author has said nationality is a disease. He has said this only because a strong or a rigid adherence about anything is likely to create problems. Whether it is about power or position, again, here the problem comes. So, we need to understand that we have to come out of differences. These are all time being. Today, I am born in a particular country, so I have that nationality. Had I born in some other country, then I would have been that. Why should I forget? Why do I restrict and why do I adhere myself to a particular nationality? We are human. We believe in humanity. We are human. We should believe in humanity. And as we do this, when we feel this, that is enough. For a human, without language also, 
you can express. It is not necessary that every time we need to have the vocabulary to express our channel. The body language also speaks. There are non-verbal clues also. Many educated people, many knower of the languages, the expert of several languages, when they go to a different country, the language of which the language which is unknown to them, they turn illiterate. So why to post up our expertise of a particular language? We need that. We have to come out of the differences of color also, whether it is black or white or brown. What is that? We are human. Physical strength, weak or poor or strong. Again, we are human. Whatever ownership you have, it is time being your body itself. Is not of your ownership. It is time being. It is a time being rest house. We all are travelers. Then what ownership? Which ownership? And why should we boast of that? As and when we think, and as and when we get this real idea, I tell you, peace comes to us. Peace comes to us. Why? Because we have developed ourselves against this avis of differences. And when you develop yourself against this avis, you acquire harmony because this harmony comes out of the understanding, the right understanding which you need to bear. We need to understand that we have different identities. Fine. As per our role, we or as per well, uh, our acquaintances or whatever we have, we identify ourselves like that. But that is not the real thing. The reality is that today we are human. And all others are also human. We have to understand that. And when we know this idea that we are human, This helps us to come out of all and other differences. And we develop harmony with ourselves. And as we develop harmony with ourselves, we develop the harmony with the environment. And when we do this, we are at peace. Peace, although only a five letter words, but there are several values that are inculcated through peace. There are several values that are inculcated through peace. These are some of the values, but it is not restricted only to these. You have love, equality, forgiveness, abstinence, freedom from deadly sins, Cultivation of virtues, discipline, honesty, purity, endurance, integrity, self-discipline, self-control, self-respect, dignity, acceptance, equality, sincerity, friendship, courage, kindness, sympathy, patriotism, devotion, tolerance, meditation, power of concentration, concentration, and ultimately humanism. These are the values which are required in all of us. And as and when we have these values, we are at peace. We are at peace because now we consider each human as human. We don't know a person by his caste, category, race, religion, color, not that. We know human only as human. The gift of nature 
or God, whatever we say. And as we know this thing, we appreciate every individual. Not restricted to the individual, we extend it to the animals, birds and the nature itself. We fall in love with nature. We know ourselves better. We know our real needs. And as and when we know this, we are at peace. I take this opportunity to thank the coordinators of UGC HRDC Gujarat University for giving me this opportunity to present this session. Thank you so much.